All right, let's talk about Chiefs first round selection, Felix Nduke Uzuma. I'll be calling him Felix throughout the course of this video because that's obviously easier for me to pronounce, uh, a little bit less wordy. But, uh, you know, he is someone who was definitely an interesting prospect coming in. I don't know how many people had him as a first rounder. Some people had him as a fringe first rounder, which obviously ended up going last pick of the first round. Uh, But I thought he had a pretty interesting first game, or not first game, but uh, second game here in the preseason for the Kansas City Chiefs. He had a really well-graded first game, so it's fascinating seeing what he would do in this one. And let's just jump into it, starting off with this play you see on your screen. He's going to be going up one-on-one against a left tackle right here. Right when this play begins, he's going to try to use a bit of speed right here. That's his goal, and so far, it's working. I mean, he's gotten past the tackle to where here is where the question begins for Arizona and for uh, Felix here of can he get to the you know can he get to the quarterback before getting pushed behind the quarterback you see at a tackle really has the hand placement where you kind of have to have it at this point of getting that right arm kind of on the uh, you know side area of Felix to where he can hopefully push him behind the quarterback that's going to be his goal um and you know it, it looks like Felix is going to do something a bit odd here as you see, I think he tried to cut back, actually, instead of just trying to power forward, and he ended up sl- just slipping and falling, which is obviously not ideal. Uh, again, big chunk of that is just a grass issue, right? Can't blame him too much for, you know, the fall, because, like, I don't know how much of that was just, you know, the cleats gave out. What are you going to do if, you know, the cleat, you have cleat issues? Uh, you know, that's just kind of how football works, right? So we weren't really able to get a definitive answer, although I did still feel like, I don't know, I would have liked to see him just go straight towards the quarterback right there. I don't know why he had to get really too fancy with his uh, footwork too much. I don't know if maybe he just tried to cut a little bit closer than he had to or what, or if he just fell weird and that's, you know, why it looked like that. I don't know. But, uh, you know, worth bringing up, I think, because it was still a very good job to get to that initial good spot. Unfortunate that the ending didn't go the way he wanted it to. But okay, how about one where he doesn't just lose his footing? Uh, This one would be another example, not quite as good of an initial jump uh, on this one as he did the last one. Like, watch how one this play begins. You know, I think the tackle's doing a better job of meeting him on the outside, of using lateral movement to get over and try and block uh, Felix here so that, you know, uh, for... Uh, Felix, he can try and just continue to power through, uh, but it, the hand placement is a little bit better, right? The tackle has a bit of a better hand placement to where if he does try to get to the outside, could potentially push him behind the quarterback. Let's see how it works here. And as you see it, man, that nearly could have been good. I mean, the reality is, if the quarterback, Clayton Toon on that play, if he threw the ball at the perfect time, it's very possible there could have been a strip sack on that play. So I'm showing these as positive plays. To me, these are positive plays. He's getting there. He's figuring out how to get to the quarterback. It might take him a little bit of time. That's a reasonable thing to suggest. You know, uh, when you're picked 31st overall, sometimes it takes you a little bit of time to fully develop. And that might be the case here with Felix. But at the same time, he's getting near the quarterback. And the reality is, uh, if you can get near the quarterback, you can get to the quarterback. That's just how it works. There's no player in NFL history who can get near the quarterback but can't get to the quarterback. So uh, for Felix, uh, to me, it's a positive. And something like this is an interesting play, I think, where what's going to happen is you see where uh, he is on the screen, and it kind of looks as though a tight end will be blocking him right when this play begins. So okay, tight end blocks him, except That's not exactly how this play... uh, So I actually do believe... I'm not exactly sure what happened here, to be honest. Watch out right off the bat. Felix just runs right by the tight end. And so this is a screen pass. It's a halfback screen. That's the way this play is designed to work. So part of me wondered, okay, was that intentional? You let the edge rusher go behind you and then run up to block. But the tight end here also doesn't run up to block. So what I think happened was that he was supposed to block Felix, but Felix just got past him so quickly he kind of just didn't know what else to do and so eventually looked for someone else to block that's what I think happened there again a little bit weird to uh, say exactly I'm not in the huddle I can't say for sure but here's what we do now we now have number 97 for Kansas City in the backfield and this is where let's see what he can do to disrupt plays I mean even if it was intentional to let him get into the backfield untouched right here that doesn't mean you can't have a positive impact on the play As you see, I would say that he closes that gap quickly and does kind of disrupt that play a little bit. Still able to get the, you know, uh, screen pass off, so didn't end up winning. But to me, these are still plays where he's making positive impacts, and that's kind of what I like to see, uh, you know, when I watch tape. It's just, are you finding ways to make positive impacts, even in unique ways? Obviously, 
What do we care about the most? The most impactful thing you can do as an edge rusher is to just consistently win against tackles. That's what I want to see you do. But that's not the only way you can find value. And something like this is still, in my opinion, him adding value to some degree. Although, of course, goes without saying, this was a very odd and unique play. That is also a very fair thing to say. As for the negatives, there's some negatives as well. And listen, there's going to be negatives as an edge rusher, right? I mean, the reality is that's just part of the position is you lose more than you win. You know, if a great edge rusher will get a sack a game, right? If you get a sack a game, you're one of the best edge rushers of all time. So, uh, you know, getting that one play is difficult and you're going to lose far more often than you're going to win. This play, you have a left tackle who is going to be blocking him. But I wanted to show this play for a very specific reason. Not just because it's going to be a loss. Because, again, losses happen. But watch how you see how Felix is going to try to use his power here. Let's see if he can just overpower the tackle. Use his bull rush, which is something that, when it works, it's awesome. However, right here, it's just not going to work. I mean, it, just, it doesn't, you know, it's not generating any pressure whatsoever. Quarterback had plenty of time to make a throw and pick up a first down there. I mean, those are tough. Those are tough plays for sure to make. And I'm not going to criticize him for not being able to do it. But to me, this is the classic example of why young players need to play some preseason. Because just the reality is it takes time. It takes time to develop this stuff and to find a way to, you know, get to the quarterback uh, and figure out how, what moves can work to get to the quarterback and what moves can't work to get to the quarterback. That stuff, it's just, it's a time, time, uh, it's a lengthy process. And, you know, for someone like uh, FAU, he is just going to have to learn how to do it and learn what moves he has that work at the next level and learn what moves do not work at the next level. So what do we make of all this? What is the takeaway with Felix Duque Yuzuma? I had to say his name at least a couple times in this video. Uh, what do we make of all of this? And I, I do have to say, I feel like having uh, such a wordy uh, last name like that uh, has to be the main reason why he doesn't get as much attention. That's got to be the main one because no one wants to make a video about a guy with that many syllables in their name. But what do we make of Felix's performance in this one? It, it's weird because I came into this video making a positive video. And like when I came up with the clips to show, I'm like, okay, this is a pretty positive video with a couple of nitpicks. It read a lot more negative than I think I intended. Uh, so doing a little bit of clarifying in real time here, I liked what I saw from him. Again, to some degree, these things always come down to expectations. And if, I, if TJ Watt was doing that, you'd say, oh, not the best game from TJ Watt. But like, I'm not expecting a rookie who was kind of known for being a bit of a raw prospect to come in and just be elite right off the bat. That's just not how that's going to work. That's not how I expect that to work for our guy, Felix. I think that there's definitely some some real positives to his game for sure. Uh, and I think that he showed those positives so far towards his game. And I think that he's got to learn how to become a complete pass rusher. But like, we knew he was going to have to learn that. Sure, there was the scenario where we walk, turn on the preseason tape and see him just look like a superstar getting sacks every single play. Okay, that didn't happen in this game, certainly. He you know was better in the first preseason game, PFF grade-wise. Uh, maybe I'll make a video you know, breaking down his whole uh, you know, preseason performance after his third game. I don't know. I want to talk about that first game as well because uh, I'm, I'm picking the, the worst lesser of the two games to talk about just because that's how the schedule worked out. But, um, you know, uh, but I do think that he showed some nice things and I think has to me impressed me and in his journey from coming from being a sort of raw prospect to a star player, he is currently on the right trajectory. Doesn't mean he'll get to becoming a star player, just that he's on the right trajectory, which is good. So he's, you know, he's meeting expectations, right? Uh, he's reading, he's a, a fifth grader reading at fifth grade level, right? Uh, you're meeting expectations. And hopefully that means that you can, you know, when you graduate college, be the, uh, be a superstar reader. I don't know, maybe a weird analogy, but you get what I'm trying to say. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.